All right, so I finally did it. I completed my fan cut of Justice League. And uh, we now have Zack Snyder's Justice League, the 214 cut. That's right. The original runtime of Zack Snyder's director's cut of Justice League, the thing that we fought to get released for years, that never really got released. He kind of made a new version of the film. Uh, but now I've gone back and I've made a fresh cut of the film that ends at exactly the 3 hour and 34 minute mark, which translates to 214 minutes. And I actually had a lot of fun making this one, because I was dissatisfied with the 2017 Justice League uh, version of Justice League. Uh, very dissatisfied with that. And when Zack Snyder's Justice League came out, I was, you know, almost as dissatisfied with that as well. I just felt like the movie was too long, there was too many needless scenes, there was too much uh, repetitive uh, musical scores... Uh, especially the Wonder Woman theme that goes through Zack Snyder's Justice League with the, the high-pitched native girl singing. I don't know what exactly you call that, but uh, that was one of the big changes I made is I cut that down a lot. Uh, it's still there, but it's about half as much. You know, it's, there's about half as many music cues like that. And when they do happen, I try to blend it with some other music so it's not an isolated thing. to make it uh, more digestible, you know. And another change I made uh, that a lot of you will notice right off the bat is the aspect ratio is fixed. I had to go through a lot of scenes to recenter them and get them uh, to fit your TVs because um, Zack Snyder's Justice League is shot in an IMAX ratio that's built for IMAX screens, but not your TV screens. That's why there's these huge black bars on the side. Um, it's just a giant square image. And there is no focus on the center of the image. I actually had to go and recenter a lot of the images that you see in my cut. That took a lot of time. And my aspect ratio is closer to like movies like The Witch, where you have these thin black bars on the sides that aren't very noticeable. So, you know, that's a big change right there. But yeah, you know, this is my cut of the film. You know, if you still want to watch uh, the four hour Zack Snyder Justice League cut, it's always there. If you prefer the Josh Whedon two-hour cut, it's always there. But my cut is a happy medium between the two. Uh, it's three hours and 34 minutes with credits and everything. You know, without credits, it's more like three hours and tw uh, 24 minutes as opposed to, you know, three hours and 34 minutes because the credits are about 10 minutes on their own. And some simple things I try to accomplish with uh, this cut of the movie, the 214 cut, is I want to make it a little bit more fast-paced. I didn't want to linger on shots too long. I wanted to kind of fly through, you know, the first half of the movie. Most of the action scenes are intact. I did cut down a little bit of the final battle and a little bit of the uh, Amazons on uh, Themyscira fighting Steppenwolf. I did cut that down a little bit. And the only reason I did that was for pacing reasons. I just felt like those fights were dragging a little bit too long. But for most of the movie, the action scenes are intact. Because uh, I feel like that's the strongest point of Zack Snyder's Justice League is the action. I feel like all that was very good. I wanted to keep as much as possible. Uh, but, you know, my initial cut of this movie is about three hours and four minutes before credits. And, you know, then I added the credits on. And I was like, you know, I'm only like 15 minutes away from the original director's cut runtime. So I started to add some scenes back in. Um, scenes I initially cut down a lot. I was like, all right, we'll add a little bit more back in. Um, like Wonder Woman uh, telling the little girl that she's a princess and stuff and, you know, comforting the people after she just murdered uh, the, the goon in front of them. Originally, I had that cut out, her comforting everybody, because uh, I just wanted it to, you know, move along. But I, I added that back in, and I'm glad I did. I think like that really helps Wonder Woman not look like a complete monster for murdering all these uh, terrorist dudes. She takes time to, you know, make sure everyone's okay. I think that's a good thing for a superhero to do. 
So we kept that in. I added a couple Josh Whedon scenes, uh, like the lasso scene with Aquaman. I felt like that's actually a really great addition because the whole movie, Aquaman is really stoic. He's kind of mean to everybody. Like Volko, he backs away from Volko. He doesn't really want to take Volko's advice. Uh, when he's talking to Amber Heard's Mira after Steppenwolf takes the second box, he backs away from Mira as well and uh, is kind of cold to her. So I added uh, the Josh Whedon lasso scene. So you finally see Aquaman uh, say how he really feels, and it's kind of funny. And then I end it with Wonder Woman going, I thought that was beautiful. And then it cuts on that, you know. I didn't leave the other part where uh, he makes a piranha joke towards Flash. You know, I felt like we can cut down some of the jokes but keep some of the actual good stuff. Uh, one, I kept one of the fish jokes too. <laughs> uh, they're looking for the mother box and – Ben Affleck goes, uh, can you send out like a feeler or something? Uh, you do talk to fish, right? I think that's a good moment too because Jason Momoa still does his like stoic Aquaman thing where he's just like shaking his head and like disappointed <laughs> in everybody around him. I think that's good stuff. And um, these uh, scenes to me that were in the Josh Whedon version but not the Zack Snyder version, I feel like these were scenes that both Zack Snyder and Josh Whedon were both working on prior to Zack Snyder leaving because it does fit in his movie very well. It does add more levity to the film. And Zack Snyder's version of Justice League still has jokes. You know, Flash is still making a ton of jokes in the movie. But I felt the more Aquaman stuff we could add, the better, because he's not in the movie a whole lot. Ezra Miller's Flash really isn't in the movie the whole lot either. So any extra stuff I could add with them, I kind of did. Uh, of course, there's a ton of musical changes, new music cues. Most of the music I used was from 300 Rise of an Empire, which is also a Junkie XL soundtrack. He also did the soundtrack for Zack Snyder's Justice League. And what I did was not only did I use 300 Rise of an Empire, but I also used his entire, you know, four-hour score for Zack Snyder's Justice League. I went back through that, and I took some of the best bits, and I emphasized them on some scenes, like the tunnel fight. If you watch Zack Snyder's Justice League, and watch the tunnel fight, that soundtrack bit is really broken up, and you can't really hear it that well. What I did was I emphasized it more, because I think it's a really good track, and it's really kinetic, and it fits with the action that's happening really well. And what I did was I lowered, like, the movie soundtrack, right? You know, I kind of, like, put on mute a couple times and just let the score play, because the score and the imagery I felt is kinetic enough that you can go without some sound effects for a little bit. But then I still added some sound effects, you know, throughout the fight, so it's not completely mute the whole time. And I felt like it came out pretty well. Uh, there's this moment where the sword is falling and Flash has to touch the sword back into Wonder Woman's hand. I mixed two different soundtracks together right there, and I thought it came out really well. You know, you get the big brass part, but then I added some drums because Flash is running. So it's like it makes sense to hear some drums going. And then, of course, so Fl Flash uh, trips and falls. <laughs> and that kind of like ends the soundtrack right there a little bit. But yeah, you know, I uh, worked about a month and a half on this cut, like hard, like, you know, lots of nights I would stay up and just edit because it was addicting. And, you know, I started cutting stuff up and putting new stuff together and it just was flowing so well. I didn't want to stop editing and it was like that for almost a month of uh, July. And what I found when I was editing is that you could really take a lot of these scenes in Zack Snyder's Justice League and switch them around and not much really changes. I put the Aquaman Volko scene right near the beginning of the film after Bruce Wayne talks to Aquaman, right? And then I cut to him going underwater, Aquaman going underwater, and talking to Volko. It fits perfectly because Volko's talking about, uh, you know, the dark, the snatchers are coming, and our mother box isn't safe in Atlantis, and you gotta go protect it. And then Aquaman's like, I'm not doing that, and he backs away. And then Volko ends that scene with saying... Uh, you can't hide from the world uh, forever, Arthur, above or below. And it's a it's a good little introduction to Aquaman's character still. And then you go the next probably 40 to 50 minutes of the movie. You go the next 40, 50 minutes without seeing Aquaman again. So I think it's really helpful to have a, a little extra Aquaman at the beginning. Because you're going to go another 40 minutes without seeing him. You go the entire, I don't know, first hour of the movie without seeing Flash. You only see Flash in like little uh, security camp things at the beginning of the film. And that's about it. But when Flash does come in the film, he is a big part of it until the end, of course, as we all know. And of course, I think one of the biggest changes uh, people are going to notice in my cut is the beginning. I do start with the f Cyborg uh, football opening. 
you see Cyborg get in the car accident, and then it goes into the DC logos. I think that's a great way to start it, honestly. I, I love that opening, and I especially love the music choice I picked for um, you know, the Doomsday stabbing Superman and Superman letting out the shout that wakes the mother boxes. I put the song Shout from Tears for Fear, a modern cover of it, I put that over the screaming opening. And of course, I edited around, I played with the speed, you know, I, I rearranged the opening, so you see the Atlantean's mother box awaken first, or starts shaking, and then you see the Amazon's box, you know, get the crack on it, and then you see Cyborg look at the other mother box, the human mother box, and that's where, you know, it cuts. And I deliberately removed the Zack Snyder Justice League title, you know, where it just pops up and says Zack Snyder Justice League. I deliberately, you know, left that out because... Most movies, you don't really need the title of the movie at the beginning of the movie. Uh, you know, Man of Steel did not have that. You know, Batman vs. Superman did have that. But, you know, I feel like you don't really need it for Justice League. The movie's long enough as it is. <laughs> Let's say for a couple of seconds, you know. And uh, when you get to the end of the credits, it will slide up and say Zack Snyder Justice League. So you do get, you know, the title of the movie at some point. It's at the end of the credits. So I didn't feel a reason to really put Justice League at the beginning of the movie. Because most movies don't do that anyway, so. But yeah, back to the song choice. I feel like it really fits not only the scene that I put together, but it fits the theme of the movie. And the theme of the movie is parents and fathers especially. And the song Shout is about um, regretting uh, being shitty to your parents. They gave you life and in return you gave them hell. It's a direct reference to Cyborg giving Silas his dad hell for bringing him back to life. You know, being his father twice over. Uh, Cyborg gives Silas a lot of shit for that in this film. And I feel like the song Shout really fits in with that really well. And, you know, when I originally picked the song, I was just picking it because, you know, Superman's shouting. So let's get a song that's about shouting. I didn't really put together that theme about the parents and, you know, the fathers and stuff until after I was done with the movie. And then I realized what the theme of the movie is, what the thesis is. It is about fathers. It is about parents, you know, and not shitting on your parents and, you know appreciating your parents and folks like that, you know? And I feel like the song I used, Shout, really fit in with that theme a lot. But anyway, that's it for now. If you want to watch my version of Zack Snyder's Justice League, I'm calling it Zack Snyder's Justice League, the 214 cut. Click the link in the description below. I'll probably also put it in the comment box as well. Um, if you have a PC, go ahead and download it because I don't know how long the link's going to be up. You know, the second you know, the link gets taken down, I'll put up a new link and stuff like that. But go ahead and download it because streaming it, you know, it's choppy. So you might as well download it to get the whole, you know, 1080p copy. I did have an upscale 4K copy of this on my computer, but it's 60 gigs. So that's a little too big. I had to stick with the 1080p copy, which is about 6 to 7 gigs. So that should be an easier download for people. You can stream it. I'm pretty sure it will play on your phones. If that's all you got to watch it on, it should play on your computers. But I do recommend downloading it just to have the file, because I don't know how long the link's going to be up. And you can always take that file and put it on a thumb drive and share it with people, or you know, take that thumb drive, put it in your PlayStation 5 or whatever, put it in your TV and watch it that way. Tons of different ways you can watch it, but yeah, the link is there. I probably had the video say link in the description the whole time as I was talking here. But anyway, that's about it. I hope everyone has a great day. I had lots of fun making the cuts. I think it's my best work. I do like it a little bit better than my Green Lantern cut. My Green Lantern cut I did with, you know, a laptop with old editing software. and It didn't come out perfect the way I wanted it to. Uh, but this Zack Snyder's Justice League, the 214 cut, I feel like I did everything I wanted to do. And I even have a 4K, like, upscaled version of it on my PC too. So I even have, like, a very crisp looking version of it. Uh, the 1080p, the blacks are still a little pixelated in some shots. In some shots, it's not. Some shots, it looks really good. But in some other shots, you can see the pixelation in the blacks. You'll notice it a couple times, but I don't think it's enough to distract you from watching the movie. Um, you kind of get into it, and you kind of forget about it. But anyway, that's it for now. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, please watch it all the way through, and then let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, I'll see you all in the next one. I'll probably do a live stream talking about this even more with some other people I've watched it. I've already been sending out DMs with links to this so people can click on it and watch it and tell me what they think. Anyway, bye-bye guys, and click that link and please enjoy 
Zack Snyder's Justice League, the 214 cut, the original director's cut of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Thank you and enjoy the show.